All right, while we're on gaming here, back with another one. This is going to be part four in the Super OP Fray series. So here we're going to be explaining pretty much the electric tree, right? Uh, so this is going to be Olas's magic. Really, the best way to look at it is her abilities are reality altering, so they kind of deal with the control of magnet, electromagnetism, and light. So let's go ahead and look at her spell tree. So this is just giving you a chance to see, of course, that her tree is full and then like I, everything's upgraded and all that stuff. Right. And so kind of one of the things I want to point out, you know, diversify here. We just looked at suppression, spoof, scale. These are all of the abilities that are either traversal related, dodge related that you don't normally see. And in addition to that, you have diversify, which is basically that next level ability that allows you to really improve your gear because that gives you your fourth slot for both your coat and your or cloak and necklace. Right, so let's go ahead and get into this. This is a monument to wisdom one. And so here we're just using different things. There I'm demonstrating use of pole start. Uh, and this is just the general attack, which is dart. As you can see, the idea with electrical magic is that you have to stack the magic. You have to stack as many darts as possible, then utilize it. Storm dart is a little bit different, as you see here with the area effect. You don't have to stack the darts to be able to use storm dart. But the, as with any of the other types of magic, the quickest way to utilize it is to just pretty much do a parkour move and then immediately after the parkour move, hold R2 to go to charge level 3 for it, and then just let it go. And anything in the radius gets hit by that storm dart. On the t level 3 version, it will actually knock most enemies that are of lower level away. It will not knock bosses away, it will not knock big enemies away, so just keep that in mind. Because if you do not realize that and you go to use storm dart, they will charge directly through it. So just remember that. What we did right there is I just used one of her transition attacks. That's the L1, R1, and triangle attack for uh, to use hide and seek. Um, and then after that, I used seeker darts, which was the lightning strikes coming down. We also just used compulsion, which was the big orbs, the bomb orbs, and projection, which we just used there with tossing the lightning strike forward. Uh, also, as you can see again, that's the seeker dart right there. And the seeker dart really just moves from spot to spot and then indicates lightning to hit that area. You can't really see it at first because it looks like an instantaneous light strike, but that's not what lightning strike, but that's not what's happening. The darts that you throw mark that position, and then from there, the seeker dart basically sh causes lightning to head in that direction. So here, as you can see, we just use a displacement, which distracts the enemy and makes them focus on the version of Frey that they see there. However, you have to remember that displacement only has some effect. It is not perfect. And if you are cons consistently attacking the enemy while using displacement, you will normally still get hit or attacked during that period of time. Uh, so here, I'm just kind of demonstrating on these enemies that are more resistant, whole start as well. This is Tempest, so this is the super power for Tempest that we're using right here. Um, the other thing is we have not gone into a video yet for perfect parrying. I'm going to demonstrate perfect parrying more when we actually get into the final video for the super OP fray build. I've actually in many instances just not even worried about using a perfect parry whatsoever in most of the videos that we've done because I just haven't really seen the point of it for the most part in terms of showing that technique off. But I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of that in the final video so that you can really see what it looks like. Uh, it depends on the mood that I'm in, whether or not I actually waste time using a perfect parry in most combat. The reality is, yes, it can be useful, but at the same time, the perfect parry doesn't do a lot to actually give you health back. So I generally just ignore the attack into like the, 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 the attack entirely because the benefit's not high. Okay. But let's go ahead. And as you can see, I've just been moving around the, the wheel there showing the support magic a bit. So there we just use aggression, which is basically a set of darts that is thrown out in close range. But they can go to a little bit wider range. And then you can just move directly okay. into another set of attacks. Uh, and here we're just, again, laying down some darts, and then once we get them charged up, then we go ahead and we run out Seeker Dart, and it can take out a bunch of enemies at the same time. So here, this is using another example of Storm Dart. 
same as before, and as you can see, Storm Dart will attack enemies that are even up above. So enemies that are high up if they're in the air, so it's good for taking out birds as well as your normal enemies on the ground too. So let's go ahead and mess with this higher level deer a bit. So as you can see there, we put down displacement. So as you can see, he's actually going after that image, that, that image of Frey and actually attacking it. Uh, so that's one of the benefits there again with displacement is that it can be used as a beautiful distraction when dealing with enemies. So let's now go over here. Uh, we're gonna wind up running into a few birds over here. So this is the this is the next set of enemies that we'll use this on. Uh, very good use of float there to stop our descent without ma damaging prey or causing her to lose stamina. So as we can see here, this is the beautiful part of the lightning tree. You can just really put down a lot of damage really quickly to birds because those secret darts can hit them even in, in air. So let's go ahead and try out distortion now. So we have a bunch of enemies here. And the beautiful thing about distortion is it can cause enemies to be distracted and then fight each other, as we can see. And so during that period of time, they're too busy fighting one another to bother you whatsoever. And so you can actually use that opportunity to set up to then apply more damage to them or lay down different attacks and set up. And, and really, this is a beautiful time if you wanted to, to activate surge magic, for example. But in this type of fight, we don't really need it. So there we go. That's a go uh, uh, well, not a Goliath. That's an ogre down. Uh, Goliath's a little bit stronger than that. So now that we're done with this, um, let's go ahead and take out one more set of enemies here. So we can actually go and I think we can go fight this mutant up ahead. Well, first, let's go ahead and look through the menu for a second, though, before we do that. So, again, this is just highlighting that set of spells that we looked at right there, right? So you have the Diversify, you have Spoof. We haven't actually shown a good use of Spoof yet, and we haven't shown off scale. So let's go ahead and do those right now. We have this little impasse right here, so let's go and target this spot. So once we, well, so, well really this, this cliff plateau right here. So we're going to go to the cliff edge or the top of what would be that cliff if we were looking at it from the downside. As we tried to get up the first time, right, if you notice, I couldn't use a stamina ability right after scale. So it does four jumps in a row, as you can see. But with that, you have to go ahead and use float or something like zip after scale. Because if not, there's no other follow up that you can do from scale. So you have to remember that kind of limitation. It's the same as like skip, for example. If you use skip, when you're falling, you can't combo skip into another ability because it's just, it's like, okay, it used your stamina somehow, even though your stamina bar will still be full, it is somehow or another, there's just some limitation as you being able to follow up with it. So let's go ahead and get some of these enemies out of the way. We're gonna go fight this mutant, but first we're just getting the, the fodder out of the way so that these guys can't stop us in any way whatsoever. Okay, so let's go ahead and deal with this Mylodon. This is a mutant, but at this level, of course, mutants aren't really a threat to us, to be honest. So right now, we're just kind of showing off different things, the pole start on this mutant. But just to make it clear, I'm being very careful about distancing right now because a bear can close the distance and obviously, as you can see, can lay down attacks very quickly. If we weren't being very careful and very attentive concerning the location of that bear and its follow-up attacks, it could very easily break our guard in one to two hits and we would be down. All right, so we're still laying down pulse darts right now. Uh, honestly, at this point, I'm just kind of playing around with them. And this is an example of suppression. Very, very beautiful ability, very powerful ability. You basically can completely go invisible there for any enemy, even a boss, no matter how big the boss is, he will lose track of you by using suppression if you use it at the right time. I would suggest combining suppression and skip, for example. Skip behind the enemy and then immediately, for example, enter suppression. That way they won't even know where you are. You could also use skip to just go directly behind the enemy and then immediately go into a surge magic, but you'd have to be a little careful because some of the more attentive enemies will find you within that period of time. So just something to think about. So let's go ahead and go to another area. 
So this whole thing has basically been designed or this whole video that I have here is designed to really just show and capitalize on the different attacks. It's a little bit longer probably than it might need to be per se to show each attack, but I'm really trying to show you the usefulness of each of the different types of magic and why it can be so powerful to use Olas's tree. Again, this is Olas's tree properly. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll immediately go into that surge magic. See, we combine the parkour with an immediate switch into that level three surge magic. Uh, well, not, sorry, not surge magic. Attack spell storm dart. So as we can see, Storm Dart was extremely powerful, wiped out all of those zombies pretty much instantly. Now let's go ahead and look at this set of zombies coming in here. I used Compulsion, which was that mind technique to blow up the first wave and then immediately transitioned into again a Storm Dart to be able to just knock out all of those enemies point blank. So let's go ahead and go back over here. This this section, this monument run challenge, I know like the back of my hand because this was one of the ones that was there even during the demo. So I've had so much time to refine my strategies for how to deal with enemies on this one. So in a few seconds, they'll be coming through this door right here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use projection. So as you can see, that projection almost entirely took out all of the enemies. Then we switch to a seeker dart just to get rid of the last one. I was trying to actually go backwards with flow state right there, but unfortunately it kind of took me off to the side. So of course I had to kind of jump my way back up onto the ledge. So we're gonna let this next set come in. And so what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, kind of let it charge up. I just did a, a, a dart attack. So if you do three darts after each other, so that's pressing R2 three times, when you hold it that last time or the like the fourth time, it'll automatically pull you up to level three for your secret dart. So that's what I did there. Side note, when we do the final video, the final OP video, I will actually have controller tracking in a sense on the screen. So you'll be able to see my button presses as well. That's something to look forward to. But so we're about to see the next wave uh, in a few seconds. So right now we're just kind of waiting for that to set up. Normally, if I were just trying to blitz this thing, I'd be stacking Aegis and a bunch of other stuff to Frey's character right now, but we don't need to do that, not to mention, as I'm sure y'all have noticed, I only display the magic in question that we're focusing on for that specific vid. So that's all that we're doing right now is just focusing on Olas's magic. So as you can see here, I'm just putting down multiple pole starts and making sure that I take out the enemies as they come in. If you notice though, again, Pulse Dart will only go after the enemies that the, that the darts have hit already. So if they're not marked, Pulse Dart will not go after them. Unless you have marked no enemies at all up until that point. So if there are no enemies marked and I find an area with my reticle, uh, and with the reticle I mean the aiming circle, for Pulse Dart or for, um, for Seeker Dart, it will go to that location. But if any enemy has been hit with a single dart or more, it will only go in the direction of wherever that dart is on those enemies. Now, here we have some more zombies coming in. So again, as you can see, I'm using compulsion to set them up with mines. Then I'm switching to storm dart right here because this is a lot of enemies coming in at once. So I'm taking them down using storm dart. As you can see, pretty much knocked out almost all of them entirely. And now I'm just using the last version of Tempest to get rid of this monster down here. Uh, it looks like he still has a little bit of health, so we'll just go ahead and finish this up with multiple hide and seeks. And then after that, a release of Pulse Dart to finish him off entirely. At this point, we just gotta wait for the time to tick down, because again, we've, we've already done it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's over. So with that being said, this should actually earn us a very nice high score. Very good. Yeah, so that's our base score. Then we get the time bonus. Then we get the total bonus. So yeah, that's a new record actually. And that's definitely a five a five circle, so a gold circle store score. So yep. Good to go. And so that will have us done with this area here. So let's go ahead and we'll go to one more spot to showcase the battle dynamics a little bit further. So we have an area called the Croc Emporium. 
And so we're going to, or at least in my opinion, I call it the Croc Emporium. That's what I used to call it back when I was even playing the demo a lot too, right? So it's right over here where there's just a ton of Crocs in this area. And this is, again, this is, we've all, we've been in Apple, um, Abolette, Abolette the whole time. Now, here, there's just a bunch of Crocs. So what I'm doing, as you can see, I'm just tossing out darts as quickly as possible. This is a showcase of just how fast if you use the auto-targeting and everything else. And we're not talking about some type of thing in the settings. This is literally just moving the, the, the target, the auto-reticle around. You can very quickly lay down darts and then attack multiple enemies. So again, right now, this is a show off of Pulse Dart. So we're going to go ahead and switch into more of the Secret Dart which the reason why Seeker Dart can be more effective than Pulse is because Pulse is used for singular enemies. Seeker, Seeker Dart can hit multiple enemies at once. And then, of course, we're using Tempest here. And as you can see, Tempest is very, very powerful if you can get it to hit enough enemies. I've noticed that Tempest will miss small enemies sometimes, so just keep that in mind. But with bigger enemies, Tempest almost always hits all of them. And so in a situation like that, where you have that huge field of enemies surrounding you, Tempest is very, very powerful. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clean up the remainder of these enemies. And at this point, this is literally just me messing around. So yeah, don't don't take any of the techniques that I'm using here too seriously. I'm, I'm just toying with them at this point. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and kind of take that one out with a combination of Seeker Darts and then the Hide and Seek, that transition ability, right? And then right now I'm just, again, just kind of messing around with multiple Seeker Darts and stuff. Realistically, that Compulsion, I feel, should have caused a little bit more damage. Like, it should have actually done something because I did put it down uh, in, in such a way where when I exploded it, it should have damaged them, but... Compulsion doesn't have as wide of a range as Prime does. So Prime is the mine ability from Frey's tree, and Compulsion does not have as large of a radius. So just yeah, keep that in mind. At this juncture, I'm just kind of showing off different things. We're using the combination of projection and pole starts to take them out at the moment. And that is an example of what I mean by when you aim pole start and there are no darts currently attached to any other enemies. If you notice, it completely missed it, it didn't go toward any of the crocs, it just went straight into the ground where the reticle was. So this is our last croc that we have to take down. We're just going to go ahead and mess with him a bit. And there we go. So we are done with those enemies. And at this point, this has been pretty much a great example of Olas's magic. I uh, don't really think there's anything much left to show. So we'll go ahead and end it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. Oh, and one other thing. If you can, please like and subscribe. If you have any other suggestions for gameplay, improvements in terms of how I can structure my videos, just leave them in the comments. I'll definitely get to them. I'll respond, dialogue the whole nine, and I'll figure out how to kind of add more things. Because, I mean, I'm always looking to get better, both in terms of gameplay and in terms of presentation. So, yep. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I know I've already said it, but, hey, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Mm.